sir? My name is Kewa Morian, and I am a survivor of two genocides. The history, if it's not accurate, it's a fiction. And the value of history is not accuracy. So where do we go to learn the truth? The Turkish general who is blackmailing American Congress for discussing Armenian genocide and telling that there will be grave consequences if they recognize <coughs> they distract to other nations, but several nations recognized. Hitler in one of his speeches said, who talks about Armenian genocide today? Meaning that Jewish genocide also will be forgotten soon. Even Hitler admitted Henry Morgento was the American ambassador from 1914 to 1916 in Istanbul. And he was the eyewitness. He, know, he saw everything that happened there. And he wrote a book, and the title of the book is Henry Morgento's Story. In his book, he explains what happened why it happened, how it could be prevented. Now, there were several missionaries working in Turkey with the Armenians. They founded seven colleges, a theological seminary and a missionary hospital. In 1915, when the Turks entered the war, they moved, <coughs> they returned home. On their way, they met the ambassador and told him what they saw, all those heinous atrocities that were being committed toward Armenians. Mrs. Morgento, day after day listening to these stories, became so nervous. She couldn't take any more, so she left her husband and came to New York. So the ambassador remained one year away from his wife. In his book, he also mentions that New York Times was printing daily events, what was going on in Turkey. An Armenian historian, Mr. Peter Balakian, goes to Library of Congress, studies those, uh, those written about Armenians, and writes this book, The Burning Tigris, it is about Armenian genocide and the American reaction. In those days, Americans were sympathetic to Armenians. The missionaries were the Armenians. They came from Boston. And in Boston, Fenwell Hall, they founded a relief committee. Then the committee moved to New York City, and it was headed by Mr. Franklin Roosevelt. So they gathered $25 million, and they saved 6,000 orphans and many Armenians who had lost everything. And in this book also, I have a picture. I wish everyone saw it. They gave this picture in the Sunday school children to collect money. And it's right here. I have given a copy of this book, one to Boston Library, another one to Robbins Library. <coughs> Anyone who is interested can read this book and get a full idea of what happened to Armenians. Now, the two Jean Turks, those military, who were conducting the war during the Ottoman Empire. When the war, they lost the war, they escaped to Germany. And an army captain named Mustafa Kemal 
declared himself the president of Turkey, he continued the same policy, ethnic cleansing policy, toward Armenians. In 1918, the war ended, and the British came to southwestern part of Turkey, which Armenians call it Iligia. And they remained there eight months. During those eight months, Armenians had prosperity and peace, but it did not last long. During the war, the British and the French were allies. After the war, they became enemies. So British moved out and the French moved in. When the British mo was moving out, they gave weapons to the Turks and told them to fight the French. But the Turks couldn't fight, fight the French. They turned toward Armenians who had survived the genocide. I was born in Antep. Now they changed the name of Antep to Kazi Antep, which means victorious. Can anyone meet the Ameri uh, Turk ambassador and ask him, why did you change this name? Now, two Armenian heroes in Antep, they decided that they are going to defend the people. So all the Armenians united and they defend themselves for 11 months. After 11 months, the Turks ran out of ammunition and food, so they asked ceasefire. The Turks <coughs> interpret this ceasefire as a victory. Armenians were not fighting for victory, Armenians were fighting for self-defense. Armenians were happy that the war ended, but it did not last long. From Paris came order to the French general to move out of Turkey and settle in Syria. So we moved to Syria. We came to the United States. They accepted us. They treated us with respect and dignity. And they saved us from hell. So thank you. United States for saving us. A lot of our relatives are still living in hell. Give a good hand to this noble nation, the United States of America. 